Are you of the view that there's going to be a, a great rotation, though? I mean, that, that ultimately the, the cyclicals, the banks, the others that have seemingly been on love, though actually I should say the banks have, have, have had a nice little pop recently, that, that they will have success and that's, that success will be to the detriment of the, the stay-at-home stocks that have had such success? Or do you think they can both rise at the same time? I think the stay-at-home stocks, tech in general, uh, I think it's going to underperform in the coming year, Andrew, but I don't think it's going to collapse. I think it'll participate in another up year in the market. You know, I, I think 2021, we're en route to the fastest year-on-year -year growth rate uh, in real GDP in 35 years. I think we're going to do 6 percent growth next year. That'll be the fastest growth since 1984. If we do that, then uh, something like that. I think we're moving from extreme pessimism this year to massive optimism in the coming year. We'll, we will get to a point where this sentiment we see today looks tame, I think, when we finally uh, uh, blow, the, blow the horns and declare victory against COVID. And in that world of strong growth, it benefits broader market plays. I think it benefits most small cap, cyclical, international markets far more than it benefits uh, unit growth companies and stay-at-home stocks. So I think they're going to perform, but I would still own some because they do diversify your portfolio against the shocks you're going to have if you just have an all-cyclical right. stock portfolio. I, I know I, 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 we should always suggest that people are long-term investors, but you also mentioned you thought there might be a pullback. People obviously try to find mm -hmm. opportunity, and they do try to time these things to the extent they can. Um, are you suggesting, I mean, if, if you're playing this out, you're saying 12 months from now, you're thinking that, that, that there's going to be even more optimism in the market, in which case, do you wait for this pullback that you're talking about or do you buy right now? You know, if, if you're not in, I wouldn't wait for this pullback. I think it's going to be sentiment. Sentiment pullbacks are tough to call. If it's more fundamental, if the Fed's working against it, rates are going up, inflation's going up, those are easier. Sentiment ones are tough. I think it'll be brief even if it happens, Andrew, because we're too close to vaccines. We're too close to reopening where right. we're going to have lagged impact of stimulus, boosting growth. Earnings are going up. So I think we might get one here over the over the interim term. But I wouldn't I wouldn't put a lot of weight on that. Right. I would think more. Where do I want to be Jim, a year or does, two from uh, now? Jim, we got we got 20 seconds. Does, we've got 20 seconds. Does it matter if the vaccine comes out in May or if it somehow gets pushed into the September October meeting in terms of really people being able to have access to it? How much does that matter? Or are people just going to look past whatever it is? I think we're close enough where the market's going to look through that a little bit. I think the economy's in a lot better shape than people give it credit for. And okay. I think whether the vaccine comes out uh, is not as important. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.